When I was younger, before uh, George Harrison died, my dad told me a joke. It went like this. What would it take to reunite the Beatles? And the answer? Three more bullets. Alright, that bad joke aside, welcome back. Today we're taking a look at the Charter Arms Undercover in 38 Special. So, as you can see, this gun is roughly a K or a J frame size revolver. Five shots, 38 Special. They make them now that will do 357 Magnum, but this one is 38 Special only. Um, as you can tell, it takes a lot of cues from, as I said earlier, the J-Frame and uh, similar manual of arms. You push forward to eject. It's even got that old Smith & Wesson style uh, cylinder release. Swing out cylinder, five shots. A couple of different things though. This gun uses a one-piece frame, unlike my uh, Chief Special here, where it has a side plate. This one does not. This is kind of a... I think Ruger does the same thing. Actually, I can't remember that. Don't quote me on that. But it's a single piece. In theory, it's supposed to be stronger. Um, I've had no problems with my Smith. I've had no problems with this gun shooting any 38. Also, it's got a uh, free float firing pin. Or, sorry, transfer bar. Um, you can see it's got the safety in there. That will drop. It'll drop before... Uh, the hammer makes contact with the firing pin. That's something you see a lot of are on more modern guns. Um, what's interesting is, despite being a you know Smith and Wesson kind of form and function, it rotates the opposite direction. It rotates like a Colt, or as I like to call it, the wrong way. So, it rotates clockwise, and then my Smith here, these have been checked, rotates counterclockwise. So, you know, what do you know? Otherwise, uh, differences between these two because. As I said, they're the most comparable. Um, you can see this one has aged differently. It's got more of that plum kind of finish you'll see, or plum bluing you'll see on older Rugers and all that as it ages. That's just related to the alloy. Also, trigger guard on these is aluminum. This was all to help save weight. And when you put them together, you know, hand in hand, this one does feel a bit lighter. Kind of nice. Probably only a few ounces, but if you were to carry that all day, it would certainly help. You see it's got a fatter front sight post. I actually like that, especially for the type of shooting you're going to be doing, which is up close, bad breath, and all that. You know, also you can easily acquire, as you can see, I've done the poor man's solution of putting some, uh, it's either white testers paint or white out or something on there. Just something to help me pick it up easier. Otherwise, uh, you know, it's a J-frame size thing. I thought that the grips would fit, but they attach differently, so you can't just go and get, like, a set of hoe grips for... A J frame and drop them on. You have to find ones that actually fit. Um, accessory wise, though, that's my uh, bodyguard 38. I carry it in this pocket holster, but drops right in. You have to excuse my pants beeping at me. I'm not sure if you picked that up, but CGM's going off. Speed loader, that'll drop right in. Sorry, this is always hard to do on camera. HKS 36, the same stuff you'd use at 85 shot, 38 from Smith. So, how this gun, gun come to be? Uh, Charter Arms was started by Doug McLenahan. I think that's how you pronounce his name, in the 60s. He uh, worked for Sturm Ruger, he worked for Colt, decided to go out on his own. So, this was one of the first guns he made, at least in serial production. Once again, uh, was trying to do some weight savings and increase the manufacturing and, in theory, strength by having a single piece cast uh, frame. And again, a lighter aluminum trigger guard. Rifling is uh, six groove on this. Charter Arms is one of those companies, too, where they've had an interesting history. So if you look at this one, it says Bridgeport, Connecticut there. So they made guns from the 60s up until the mid 70s, I want to say 76. And then he moved to Stratford, Connecticut. Then at some point in the 90s, the company declared bankruptcy. They are restructured. And I believe since then, they've been out of uh, Shelton, Connecticut. But uh, that's how you can kind of age these. So the earliest guns actually don't even have serial numbers. That one does, but the earliest ones, they did not serialize. Gun Control Act of 68 was the only time that they were required to... Or was when they were required to start serializing. Other, up until that point, it was completely optional. You can also kind of age it based on the grips. You see that's like a scroll or a uh, parchment document there. The earliest ones had an oak tree or some type of tree. I don't know, I was never really good with uh, wildlife. 
conservation and all that. I was a terrible legal scout. But, uh, yeah, it's kind of how you can age them. So, with this gun, you know, unfortunately it has the infamy of being the Lennon Blaster. You know, 1980, it was used to assassinate John Lennon. Well, assassinate's kind of a loose term. He wasn't a political figure. He was a communist, and now he's a good communist, but he really wasn't a politician. Now, more aptly for the term assassination was Arthur Brayman used this to attempt to assassinate uh, George Wallace in 72. I believe that was up in Wisconsin, and unfortunately for Mr. Wallace, he was paralyzed from that attempt on his life and would be till the day he died. So, what good is this gun for? Not like any 5-shot 38. Concealed carry, that's really it. This would not be the gun I would take to teach someone to shoot revolvers. Get a K-frame, get something, you know, full-size 38. If you really want to teach them to shoot wheel gun, that would be the best way to do it. But, you can use it how I use it, or how I use J-frames. If it's lazy, and I gotta go to Walmart or Publix, or, you know, when I was up north, up to Meyer, you know, place where you don't feel like you're gonna be getting in a gunfight, five shots, maybe plus an extra speed loader is all you need. Just throw that in your front pocket, you can go on your cargo shorts, heck, you could probably go on your basketball shorts if you cinch your pants tight enough, and you've got at least something on you. That said, as far as J-frame shoot, I've been pleasantly surprised with it. I think I might shoot it a bit better than my Chief Special, as much as I love that gun. It's just something about it, I feel like I can shoot this a bit better, maybe it's, maybe it fits my hand better, maybe it's just that bigger sight picture, allows me to put it more consistently. I don't know, but not a bad gun. If you can find an old one like this and pick it up for cheap, I paid 150 for it. And, you know, just for something to have that's fun, totally worth it. Even then, they still make new ones, and you can get them for under $400. There you go, you got a five shot. These days, plus P rated 38. So, if you made it this far, thanks for watching, and uh, let me know what you think below. Bye.